This, this is Saurabh, and, and you're listening to my favorite talk show, show the, the, the BG Show with Aditya. Warden threw a party in the county jail. The prison band was there, and they began to wail. The band was jumping, and the joint began to swing. I heard they knocked out jailbirds sing. Let's rock, everybody! Let's rock, everybody in the whole cell block was dancing on the jailhouse walk. Spider Murphy played the tennis saxophone. Little Joey blowing on the slide trombone. The drummer boy from Illinois went crash, boom, bang. The whole rhythm section was a purple gang. Let's rock, everybody! Let's rock. Everybody in the whole cell block was dancing to the jailhouse rock. Number forty-seven said to number three, "You were the cutest jailbird I did ever see. I sure would be delighted with your company. Come on and do the jailhouse rock with me. Let's rock, everybody! Let's rock! Everybody in the whole cell block was dancing to the jailhouse rock, 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 rock. Sad sack was sitting on a block of stone, way over in the corner, weeping all alone." Warden said, "Hey, buddy, don't you be no square. You can find a partner. Use a wooden chair. Let's talk, everybody. Let's talk, everybody in the whole cell block, dancing to the jailhouse rock." Shifty Henry said to Bugs, "For heaven's sake, no man looking now's a chance to make a break." Bigsy turned to Shifty and he said, "Nix, nix. I'm going to stick around a while and get my kicks." Let's talk, everybody. Let's talk, everybody in the whole cell block was dancing to the jailhouse rock, 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 dancing to the jailhouse. The Mumbai team entered its record sixth final in this 20-over domestic World Cup. Now they are looking to equal Australia in terms of winning the most titles, whether it's an international World Cup or a domestic World Cup. If we go into the details of what happened in the semi-final one or qualifier one between Delhi and Bombay. It was as on the expected lines. Since this tournament allows the top two teams to have a second chance at the finals, it means that one team will go all out aggressive, while the other team will tone down, waiting to preserve their energy for the qualifier two or semi-final two match. Which would be determined by the result of the eliminator match. Which means that whoever between Hyderabad and Bangalore wins today will face Delhi in the semi-final two. And whichever team between Bangalore and Hyderabad loses, their competition is finished. So the stakes of tonight's match are bigger than a qualifier one match in this tournament because. You cannot expect any laxity from any of the team. You have to be at your 200 percent if that number exists. Between Hyderabad and Delhi, which of the two teams have a greater chance of qualifying? Well, it's a difficult one because both have good team members in their team, and both will be looking to outdo the other team. Though my suggestion would be, if you win the toss, bat first. Get a good score and let the other team chase. It's often postulated that the teams which enter the final have had a near perfect tournament, despite a couple of slip-ups, which also means that a former champion can also extend their championship reign. There would be no new champion unless Bangalore or Delhi make it to the finals of this particular. Tournament. This was the debate last year that just like the qualifiers and the eliminator in this tournament, the World Cup should have had the same process to determine the finalists. So imagine in a hypothetical situation, they who had lost to New Zealand in a rather controversial manner because of the rain playing a huge role in that 
match had a second chance at the final suppose it was between india and new zealand new zealand had beaten india which could be determined as qualifier one according to the rules of this particular tournament we won't go into details about that now that shall be discussed at a later stage let's talk about the hypocrisy of a few pseudo experts it's a very simple discourse now the determination is that it's impossible to have a team without the likes of kohli rohit rohane and others though a few younger players are jostling to be in the national team and who are these younger players who have all the potential but they are not seen as that because they are not making runs what is the definition of making runs that depends from pseudo expert to pseudo expert on their radar now is a couple of batters in prithvi shaw shuman gill and rishabh pant who are nomenclatured as players with enormous potential but not converting it into the full potential because they are not making runs and prithvi shaw has often been the target of many discussions because he hasn't made runs the way he is supposed to do on the other hand even though shubman gill has made runs he has scored slowly he is not scoring at a strike rate of 160 170 but his average strike rate is around 120 which is determined not good enough for a certain 20 over format and this is eeringly a deja vu moment because this exactly happened 8 years ago when a certain person called rohit sharma was also being discussed that this individual has all the potential but since he is not scoring runs he does not deserve a place in the team and now what happens 8 years later suddenly the likes of rohit sharma virat kohli and his contemporaries are now the best batters world class players when not long ago they were the fringe elements of the team one could argue that this is in the past what happened 8 years ago does not have to be repeated on a loop aren't we doing the same thing or aren't these pseudo experts doing the same thing except now that they talking about a new group of people who aren't living up to the great expectations of a certain group and the strange part is that this discussion happens time and time again there is no end to it if it's prithvi shaw or shuman gill or a few others right now let me tell you a decade from now when the likes of rohit kohli have retired and are sitting with their feet up on the sofa or are employed as coaches and mentors and commentators and whatever things they can be employed for decade from now despite all the criticism about the likes of prithvi shaw and his contemporaries we will be talking about them in or will be saying look at this a world class batter he had his struggles but now with x number of runs x number of centuries he has taken the world by storm he is the best opener don't be surprised if a shrine is built around such people and let me give you one more example if 20 years ago somebody had predicted that gangly would be the chairperson or the president of the indian cricket board a lot of these pseudo experts would have laughed and now no one can see beyond a better chairperson or the president of the indian cricket board because of his policies or his new thought process which he has brought into the fold as far as the sport is concerned it's a very bizarre situation because do performances in this particular tournament make a difference as to how the player would turn out in an international match this tournament by design or default has become the benchmark for selecting 
certain individuals because they perform at a stage which is bigger than any fringe domestic tournament. I wouldn't be too surprised if these pseudo experts have their eyes set on a few players because of the jealousy factor that how can these players perform better than us or how can these players be allowed so many opportunities because these very individuals are forgetting that once upon a time such opportunities were showered upon a certain individual called Rohit Sharma. It was criticized back then as well only seven and a half years ago, just 90 months ago. Now we have come back to square one. Just this time there is a new set of players we think are not performing up to their potential. They are not fit. They don't make runs. A decade from now, this very group will be called world-class players without which the team cannot function. Probability of having a new champion depends on who wins the match today. Bangalore beats Hyderabad in tonight's match. Then they will face Delhi at the semi-final two or qualifier two. And whoever wins will face Bombay in the finals. And if it's Delhi or Bangalore, then they do have a 50% chance of winning their first ever domestic tournament. But it's only a 50-50 chance because if Hyderabad beats Bangalore and Hyderabad goes on to beat Delhi, well, there are a lot of factors which will influence the same. But if Hyderabad is able to beat both Bangalore and Delhi in the respective semi-finals then would be the case of which is a superior team in terms of securing their titles well Bombay will look for its fifth title Hyderabad will look for its third title some may say second but technically it's third and we shall discuss that later It's a universal but a relative truth that our sleeping patterns, eating patterns, overall lifestyle patterns, our shopping patterns have gone a big transformation due to the current situation over the past 200 days. Such assessment is subjective because not everybody is influenced by the outside conditions whether it's our sleeping patterns eating patterns our shopping patterns or our determination that how our mindset has changed and we have become subdued because of what has been happening over the past 200 days but let's focus on something which is often discussed but has become a big topic that is our sleeping patterns the most crucial part nap hypotheses that our sleeping patterns have changed or that we sleep more is once again subjective and relative to an individual the theory and its subsequent practice of an individual sleeping for eight hours a day has been prepositioned into a universal truth though once again this is subjective individual should sleep for eight hours a day that is your night time sleep but should that include your afternoon siesta and is afternoon siesta becoming an important part of an individual's daily schedule it is a tricky situation because not everyone follows a certain pattern if we postulate the theory that we should have our breakfast lunch and dinner at certain hours a few individuals would agree but a certain majority would say that it does not suit my nature of work where i'm supposed to be on my workstation at least 15 to 16 hours a day so i cannot have a set determined timetable as far as my eating habits are concerned even before this thing happened before this endemic or pandemic struck. People were at their workstations, whether they were at home or whether they were in office. 
it is a tricky situation as to whether we should spend our time thinking about our meal times or working because it's very difficult to come to a conclusion as to whether we should have a set schedule and those who have a set schedule are looked upon as people who don't work much it's a tricky situation a tricky discussion but let's focus this on to the sleeping patterns are sleeping patterns influence or are they changing as i said it's not whole it's relative it cannot be an objective assessment individuals do often sleep in the afternoon which is true but why do they do that once again it determines from person to person for some person it's because they are tired and it's a post lunch situation for others a period where they don't know what to do it's a situation where they have worked enough in the morning and they feel that they deserve to have a siesta sometimes the siesta is because of outside conditions and not because they are necessarily tired this have been postulated by many uh, experts that it's appropriate to nap when you need a quick refreshment to invigorate yourself and clear your mind if you are napping after an all nighter like a college student after a study binge or from waking up in the middle of the night to hop on a cross time zone call these are legitimate reasons to nap key words here being all nighter college student study binge so should we go on a study binge is an all nighter the best time to study because there is absolute silence around you for example i never went on a study binge which meant that if i had assignments to complete i would do it on the actual time one should do assignments not because it's after 12 am it's quiet and burning the midnight oil is kind of a cultural thing well i disagree with that those who want to carry on may well do so but i have never gone beyond a certain time to study so for me after a certain hour it's nap time which simply means if you for example sleep at 11 pm you get up at 6 am you have your breakfast by 8:30 am your lunch by 1:30 pm and your dinner by 8:30 pm and it doesn't disturb your schedule at all this is an near ideal situation for everyone it can differ from person to person the idea of a power nap in the afternoon is subjective and the question becomes which is more important giving a break to my electronic device or giving the break to our natural intelligence we have no hesitation in switching off our phones or keeping our electronic devices away from us the nice no reason in having a short nap but that is equally determined and the reasons for my nap will there are reasons which can't be explained in a straight forward manner but it happens by default it's just the time where you want to be away from electronic devices and just switch off the lights and close one's eyes have the past 6 months influenced my eating sleeping or any other such habits well they are relative but for me there is not been a huge change in such habits they have remained the same by the idiom we all like to use change is the only constant little profits that an idle king by this still hurt among those barren crags matched with an aged wife i met and told unequal laws unto a savage race that hold and sleep and feed and know not me i cannot rest from travel i will drink life to the lees all times i have enjoyed greatly have suffered greatly both with those that loved me and alone on 
shore and when through scudding drifts the rainy heads wets the dim sea i am become a name were always roaming with a hungry heart much have i seen and known cities of men and manners climates councils governments myself not least but honored of them all drunk the light of battle with my peers far on the ringing plains of windy troy i am a part of all that i have met yet all experience is an arc where through gleams that untraveled world whose margin fades forever and forever when i move how dull it is to pause to make an end to rust unburnished not to shine in use as though to breathe were life life piled on life were all too little and of one to me little remains but every hour is saved from that eternal silence something more a bringer of new things and while it were for some three suns to store and hold myself and this gray spirit yearning and desire to follow knowledge like a sinking star beyond the utmost bound of human thought this is my son my own telemachus to whom i leave the scepter and the isle well loved of me discerning to fulfill this labor by slow prudence to make mild a rugged people and through soft degrees subdue them to the useful and the good earth and heaven that which we are we are one equal temper of heroic hearts made weak by time and fate but strong in will to strive to seek to find and not to yield i have always had this opinion of harold pinker i am not surprised all the nibs feel the same they know he's got what it takes very sound on doctrine and can preach like a streak yes i enjoy his sermons manly and straight forward that's because he is one of those healthy outdoor open air men muscular christianity that's his dish he used to play football for england was what's called a prop forward really at the words prop forward i had of course started visibly i hadn't known that that's what stinker was and i was thinking how ironical life could be i mean to say there was plank searching high and low for a forward of this nature saying to himself that he would pretty soon have to give up on the hopeless quest and here i was in a position to fill the bill for him but owing to the strained condition of our relations unable to put him on to this good thing he said i felt and the thought occurred to me as it had often done before that one ought to be kind even to the very humblest because you never know when they may not come in useful then may i tell harold that the balloons going up said stiffy pardon i mean it's official about this vicarage certainly 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 oh uncle what can how can i thank you quite all right my dear said pop basse more dickensy than ever and now he went on parting from his moorings and making for the door you will excuse me stephanie and you mr booster i must go to madeline and congratulate her i was about to say dry her tears if any you think she will not be in a state of dejection would any girl be who's been saved by a miracle from having to marry gussy fink nottel very true said pop basse and he was out of the room like one of those wing three quarters who even if they can't learn to give the reverse pass are fast
there had been any uncertainty as to whether Sir Watkin Basse had done a buck and a wing dance, there was none about Stiffy doing one now. She pirouetted freely and the dullest I could discern that it was only the fact that she hadn't won on that kept her from strewing roses from her hat. I had seldom seen a young shrimp so above herself and I, having Stinker's best interest at heart, packed all my troubles in the old kit bag for the time being and rejoiced with her. If there's one thing Bertram Booster is and always has been nippy at, it's forgetting his personal worries. Pal is celebrating some stroke of good fortune. For more awesome content, tune in to the next episode of the weekly show with Aditya. For more awesome content, tune in to the next episode of the weekly show with Aditya.